All right, welcome to Ultra Chen TV. It's the first Tuesday show of 2014, and this is totally the first time I've said that tonight. <laughs> my, my name is Ultra David. This is James Chen. How's everybody going? It is season three, and um, yeah, it's hard to believe we've been doing this for two years already. It's already so. been two years, yeah, yeah. Third year, third year, pretty uh -huh. crazy. What we want to do mostly today is talk about 2013, the year in review. Mm -hmm. We're going to have our picks for best in a lot of different categories yeah, and we'll have yeah, like yeah. the top three of whatever we are talking about player and match and whatever mm -hmm. before we get to that stuff though uh we want to talk about uh a loss that the community had late last year uh nelson reyes passed away uh, uh, yeah i mean that happened pretty much right when the year ended so yeah. i mean it was very unfortunate it kind of had the year end on a on a somber note yeah um what the heck <laughs> Um, we, we, I mean, here's the thing, right? I mean, I've known Remix for, for a few years now, right? Um, we, I, I met him at Evo East. Uh, I've always seen him at a bunch of Evos. He was always a super hype guy. He was super friendly. Definitely. Everyone always had nothing but nice things to say about him. For and, sure. you know, it's just really unfortunate that, you know, that we had to lose someone so prominent in our community like that. So, I mean. Yeah, he was always very nice. Uh, I didn't know him terribly well, but whenever I saw him at Majors, we would say hello and joke around a little bit, yeah. and I always noticed him having a great time, and lots of people were around him having a great time. So yeah, one of the one of the things I said about him is when I filmed all the Evo East footage, you know, for Marvel Two specifically, I just wanted to get a bunch of hype scenes because yeah. the East Coast was like one of the most hype areas, sure. right? And dude, I had so much footage of him. Like he ended up in the MVC Two intro that I made, and like he was in there like three or four times because he yeah, was always right. going nuts at the time so yeah that sounds right so uh i mean obviously my you know, major condolences to his close friends and family it's a terrible loss for everybody yeah uh, we also a, a bunch of the fighting game community also did the donation drive for yeah. his grandmother um on you caring and um, we did confirm that, you know, even though it didn't quite get up to the full goal, it's not like Kickstarter. They do get everything that was donated oh, okay. up to that amount. Okay. So it's not like Kickstarter where they get nothing. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm yeah glad to hear for that. sure. For sure. So. Uh, okay. Well, let's talk about other things that happened in 2013 because it was a very eventful year for fighting games and the fighting game community. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff happened. Games came out. There were great game, uh, matches. There were great players. There were interesting stories. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. Lots, lots of stuff. So we're going to do a bunch of categories um, today and just talk about like the awards that we kind of came up with. We, we, we basically <laughs> picked a bunch of categories and just uh, gave like a first, second, and third place award each. Yeah. We don't even know what the know other what person say. does. Yeah. yeah, so we probably gave the same awards to everybody or something like Pro that. Probably, yeah. probably. <laughs> uh, our categories are uh, random select, which means like basically any storyline that happened, right. you can just pick something as a mm -hmm. thing if you want to highlight it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something that happened under the radar, some game or match or, or tournament that kind of flew under the radar people didn't uh, maybe pay enough attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, fighting game community member of the year. This is basically someone who doesn't play, isn't gonna, isn't gonna win an award for a championship kind of thing like yeah. that. But we want to recognize all the people who contribute to the community. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, and then the non-stupid drama story of the year. <laughs> You're right, exactly. That's what, we, so, what it's called. Yeah, we're we're just basically gonna highlight stories, and um, they're not gonna be dumb. not gonna be drama, not, not gonna be stupid, no drama. controversy stuff. So, yeah, yeah, not not BS. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're gonna talk about. Our top three events, other than Evolution 2013, yeah, because we uh -huh. thought that that would just be like the best. Yeah, that's so. number one for Sorry. sure. So um, then, uh, top fighting games of 2013, the best matches of 2013, the best players of 2013. Yeah, so those are the categories right there, and so uh, we might as well get started with uh, um, the first category, which is. The random or random whatever. What random do you got? Award. What do you got? What's your what's your? Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, huh? I do. Okay, yeah, okay, I don't okay. want to be the guy who leads this off. Okay, okay. So we we kind of joked about this, but for my third place award, I'm actually going to give this award to us. Really? Yes, I'm going to give this award to us mostly because we discovered. 
that Ono watches our show. That was pretty nice. And he trolled the hell out of us at Capcom Cup. He probably doesn't watch the show. No, he but. probably doesn't. So, but yeah, he trolled the he hell did. out of yeah, us. So that's true. that I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to us for being trolled by Ono pretty badly because you could tell. I mean, there was always that thing where he was like, "You guys said it was Retsu," and we didn't say it was Never Retsu at all. So, I don't know who said you know, that. To him. I have the funny feeling that um. You know, somebody just like gave him that information. <laughs> he didn't know. He had no idea. Exactly. He, he's not watching. So yeah. <laughs> uh, as for me, the first one that I want to talk about is good job fighting game uh, developers and publishers. I think a few of them did a really good job this year. Mm, okay. And I want to particular uh, highlight Capcom and NRS and Double Helix. Oh, nice. Okay. I think that they did really, really good jobs. Uh, I mean, I I also want to talk about. Well, I guess I'll mention. Um, uh, OTG Studios for for Dive Kick and, oh, and Iron right, Galaxy right. and and uh, Lab Zero for for Skullgirls, uh, but for the for the bigger developers and publishers, I thought that they did a great job. They had uh, they paid close attention to the community. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. they 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 design things, they balance things specifically for the community and by community members who right. each well, each one of those groups has hired. Uh, to to do work for them, and that's happening. Uh, there have been balance tests, there have been beta tests, uh, all of which were attended by top fighting game players or by anybody because uh, they've been public. Uh, and I think that that's that's great. I mean, there have been tournaments sponsored by uh, yep. by those uh, developers and, and publishers, and and that's just awesome. Uh, I really want to see that more. Do you see your chat moving, by the way, or is it? Oh yeah, your chat's moving. Mine's stuck for some strange. There we go. Okay, it's just Twitch. You just yeah, gotta just move Twitch on. Is being weird, yeah. So, okay. so that's yeah, that's the first one. Okay, cool. Obviously, your random is a lot more serious than mine. Like random, I chose to them. be all my joke Not awards. All so, my second award goes to none other than Eduardo Perez, aka PR Balrog, for being the most entertaining person to watch tournaments with. Mm. Because when you are sitting next to him, like I've I've already joked that. There should be a secondary stream that people have to subscribe to that just has a camera on PR Rog and he's mic'd. I think that would be the best supplementary stream ever because that guy, I at Capcom Cup, I basically sat right next to him. Mm-hmm. And he was pretty much, he, he was like, he made the event for me. Seriously, he he was, dances to combos. Yeah, okay. he, he like invents the combo the noise. Soul fist too. Yeah. He does the soul fist and just the comments, the jokes, it's funny. just it's everything, funny. and the Definitely. energy and stuff. So yeah. I had to give a shout out to him for for that because that was just he's just awesome. So yeah. I totally agree with that. That's yeah, a, yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Um, my second one uh, goes to uh, FSP for losing to Gandhi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he posts on Gaff, so it, maybe he's watching, or maybe somebody else can tell him. But um, a because it was hilarious. Okay, it's hilarious. <laughs> Jump in strong. Only the second hit hit uh, hits. Immediate dragon punch. Okay, so that was good. the best. That was the greatest. <laughs> but also because uh, it's just a really helpful example, and I, yeah, I'm sure it's a very embarrassing right, example. Right, right. Uh, I've certainly lost in plenty of stupid ways believe me it just hasn't been maybe uh on stream quite as much uh, as as that was but it's useful it's useful for other people to see it's a good example for how not to to deal with it i mean to be perfectly honest and and that's that's good it's good for other people to see it and hopefully people will think about how you deal with people who don't know what's going on because you have to play against them pretty differently than you play against everybody else. Right. And 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 we've actually said that we wanted to go over the match and we just haven't had a chance to, right? So Ah, oh, that match was so good. Yeah. We can still do that. Oh, we we'll still do, do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, that we'll do sure, it. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Definitely. Cool. So, uh my number one random award of the year goes to um basically a conclusion of Something that's been going on for two years, right? It's 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 been a very difficult and tumultuous um, situation here, but finally it came to its conclusion right before the year ended, and um, that was that Flo became the Bashi. That's right. Flo became the Bashi. That's right. And um, he finally conquered his demons after two years of not being able to defeat the Salgrin boss. Did you watch it when I you finally watched it, got yeah. it? I oh, actually I wasn't, wasn't watching around. when he killed... Like, I heard him go, what? And I turned and looked and Salgrin was blowing up. Oh, yeah? And yeah, and I was like, yes! So, yeah, I was like super... Was the boss Salgrin? 
It's a box. It's a box that says Salgren on it because apparently oh, there's really? a product out there that's just called Salgren. Oh. I guess that's where he got his name from. Oh, okay. But he finally defeated I didn't see it. Salgren. He became the Bashi. Good job and, to him. And, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. He's been trying to do this for years. And to see him finally accomplish it, I don't know. To me, you know, I joke about it, but at the same time, it's still pretty damn inspiring. You know, to watch Flo, who's obviously really bad at the platform. <laughs> he sucks at video games. Oh, my God. <laughs> to see him win. So, yeah, I'm super happy for it. So, my, my number one okay. random award goes to none other than Ari Weintraub, a.k.a. The Bashi. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number one uh, is, I guess, a little bit more serious. It's uh, to the fighting game community in general for having more conversations and more media and more solid written pieces uh, on, on all sorts of things from the many, many problems that the fighting game community mm-hmm. has uh, to really good things, to great interviews that, uh, that have been put up. Uh, I just I feel like we are finally developing more of those things. And mm-hmm. we've been talking about some of the problems that we have for years, and, and obviously there's a ton of work left to be done and many, many problems left. Mm-hmm. But I, I just feel like we're doing that more. Right. Doing that more yeah, than we used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I and I like that, and I want that to happen more, and I hope that it continues to happen. But I really felt like this is a year where that uh, really started to break out. So. Yeah. Okay, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Um, do you want to go to the next award? Do you yeah, want let's to go to the next award. Okay. Yeah, we okay. have too many to do. So. Okay. So the next one is the under the radar award. In yeah. other words, we just want to talk about something that maybe hasn't been talked about enough. Maybe you know. So, okay. um, just kind of, uh, expand on that kind of, um, it's just, it, it's it, <laughs> You're looking at me funny. Well, I don't know. Well, was, <laughs> I didn't know you were going with that. <laughs> Basically this award is for, for things that, that didn't get enough attention. Yes. Yes. Things yes. that we thought should have gotten more attention and didn't. And that right, can be right. a player or an event or right, a game right. or whatever you want. So for me, for third place, um, I want to talk a little bit more about, Killer Instinct's netcode and um, what that p- potentially means for fighting games. So okay. Killer Instinct developed in America on better hardware, much better netcode. And that's one of the biggest problems with fighting games right now um, yes. is that the netcode is bad. And so you can see a lot of games, they live and die by this netcode. Ki- yeah. K- King of Fighters pretty much wasn't able to succeed on the same level as Street Fighter because the netcode was bad. Would have been much easier... At least, if, yeah. if it had had, had good netcode. Yeah, because there's a lot of people... I mean, you find out there's just not an ability to travel for a lot of people, so they need to practice at home. And when right. they can't play other people, it's very difficult to right. learn. So, to me, it's like something... It's a very important thing to look out for. Of course, right before the show started, I looked at Twitter, and apparently the netcode is now botched. I heard about that, yeah. Since the patch. Yeah. So, <laughs> there was a patch man, just recently. <laughs> yeah. So in OKI. hopefully they patch the patch. I, I'm and, sure they and, will and fix it. So because I, I would think so. Like like I said in my random select award, I really like that they have paid so much attention yeah. to fighting gamers and to the scene, and they've they've mm-hmm. built things specifically with scene in mind, balance things specifically with scene yeah. in mind. So I I would have to think that they'd take yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I heard stories from tons of people saying that they played Killer Instinct pre-patch with like here in America versus Australia and it was like they were next to you know they were basically playing offline. I think it's an important huge advancement in fighting game community and probably something that you know we need to really pay close attention to and and as you said it's great that Double Helix made that a focus you know when they made their game. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's see how am I going to order this. I guess my first one goes to or wait, is my third one? What are we doing? You're doing three, two, one. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah. Right. So the third place one, I guess, is going to be Dive Kick. Okay. Okay. The game Dive Kick. Mm-hmm. Game Dive Kick is really good. <laughs> it's a great fighting game. I'm seriously, it has all the things that I care about in a fighting game. It has great movement. It has really good space control. The strategy is there. The differences among the character, the the play styles are there. You can even play the same character with different play styles, even mm-hmm. though it seems like it's so simple. And I was just really 
sad that it didn't get more attention because I really thought that it was one of the, the most interesting fighting game projects in a long time. I, I'm biased in that I have terrible execution and so <laughs> games that require that of me are not easy for me. Yeah. Games that don't are easier for me and I can I feel like I can get to the strategy more right. than I otherwise would. And I feel like I got there. And, and I just really love that game. I'd like to see more games that, even if it's not as boiled down as mm -hmm. Dive Kick was, I would like to see simpler games in, in that vein. Yeah, so. I mean, to be honest with you, I really honestly think one of the, the, the things that held it back was a presentation problem. Yeah. Mostly, I, I just had this experience over the break. I had two of my best friends come and visit me, and we were just going through all the random games. I ran a Dive Kick on my PS, PS3. So I kicked it up so they could play it, and one of my friends was just like, I don't want to touch this. This looks like garbage. Like, I don't even want to play this. And then I got him to play it, and he was like, oh, okay. So there's actually more to it than that. Oh, okay, okay. So there's like that little weird, like, yeah, that strange barrier of entry. And also, to be honest with you, they, my friends were also a little bothered by the fact that the characters are so complicated. Like, it was supposed to just be dive and kick, and then all of a sudden... The bass played differently. Seth played so differently, and all this. And stream has the all these different dives. They're like, wait, I don't get this. Like, isn't this supposed to be simple? Like, that makes me so sad. They were angry that I had to explain them how to use the characters. It's a fighting game. And explain how to use like special moves and stuff. Fighting games have some complexity to them. They're not right. You're not, and, you're, and, you're not playing billiards, all right? Right, right. Cool. and and that's the problem is that everyone had that false interpretation that the yeah. game was supposed to be simple. Right. You know, and so that's what they expect. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, what's your number two? So my number two, s similar to the netcode thing, is um, the trend of free-to-play fighting mm. games, right? That's another important thing that I think um, has a lot of effect on the future of the FGC. Because, um, so we had Dead or Alive come out, which is a free-to-play fighting game. Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate, I think it was, and then Tekken Revolution... And um, Killer Instinct isn't a free-to-play. I mean, they just rotated to Saber Wolf, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so they're definitely trying a new model, you know? And I was having a conversation with someone, like, wouldn't it be interesting if they re-released CVS2 with a free-to-play model? Because there's so many characters. You could easily do a <laughs> rotation, right? And it's a team kind of thing. So, you know, if they put, like, six characters free, you're stuck using those six characters huh. on a team and it switches. It'd be really kind of interesting. So, I don't know, like... Okay. With this trend going towards there, like having it so that, you know, we can see if it's actually a plausible model or not yeah. might be very helpful uh, for fighting games in the future. So, uh, unfortunately, Killer Instinct only has six characters, so they really can afford to make only one free character right. at a time. But who knows what will happen with well, future fighting games. You I know? mean, they're going to add a couple more characters at least. So yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Spinal's coming out Spinal's soon. Coming so, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my number two is uh, Yomacon. Because that Ooh. was the tournament that I had maybe not the most fun in, but the most fun for tournaments that people weren't talking about. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Nobody was talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a... It's not a major exactly... Uh, they're trying to make it into a major. It had it was mostly a regional thing, although there were people from other places, but it was mostly regional. But the thing that got me was that game room. Dude, the game room was amazing. It was it was like just the best arcade that I have been to, maybe ever. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think about the arcades that I've been to, and I've been to plenty of great ones, but not... Not ones that are football field sized. Right. Okay. Like That's this thing is gigantic. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's everything that you can think of, and I just I felt like people just didn't talk about Yomacon and and about that and whether the tournament itself was was of note. Maybe a different story, but I hope that it will be in the future because I just I want people to come for that. And whether you play in the tournament is a different story, but dude, just let's come play some video games with me, man. Our, let's play Third Strike and ST until 4 a.m. Arcade cabinets, dude, right? Let's do that, yeah. Dude, we were playing ST until I don't even know when. Early like, morning, man. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. It, was, it was amazing. So, it was anyway, so that's fun. my number two. Yeah. So my number one is a little bit more on the serious note. One of the things that I've noticed that um, the FGC obviously has a lot of bad reputation. And like, you know, people in the media always say bad things. They keep bringing sure. up Cross Assault, which is already two years old. Hell, we had just started our show back then. That's how long ago it was, you know. 
But the one thing that I've noticed, and um, I've seen other people mention this, one of the things that I'm surprised nobody touches on, so this kind of goes into the under the radar thing, is the ethnic diversity of the leadership of the fighting game community. And I would really like someone to start writing about this, because if you think about it, the tournament organizers, the, the, the streamers, all, everybody who's involved in, in leading the fighting game community, there's a huge range of ethnic diversity in there, That's right? True. We have a Biggie and um, you know uh, Shin Blanca who run the two who run the biggest East Coast tournaments. They're African American. The guys who run Evo, the three people, two of them are African American. One's half Latino, right? And um, Level Up is run by a Latino guy. Uh, NorCal Regionals is run by an Asian guy. Is run by a Chinese guy. Um, there's just like, and then I even saw Frosty Faustings, uh, Sin. I, I forgot what his name is, but he's African American as well. Yeah, there are there are like vanilla white guys and Jewish white guys and Lebanese guys. Yeah, exactly. So it just like so, spans yeah, okay. across the whole entire gamut of ethnicity, and I feel like this is a really important story to tell because you always see it like when they talk about national sports and major sports, they're always like. Oh, this sport has this many percentage owners of mm. you know of African American owners or coaches or whatever like okay. that, and here we have what is perhaps one of the most diverse, you know, cast of very important leaders in the community, and no one's talked about okay. it. And to me, that's kind of a shame. Um, I will tack on to the end of this though that we definitely need to improve the gender diversity oh, of leadership sure. yeah. in this community. So that is something we need to work on. We need more. You know, just we need the variety of genders in the leadership roles. So, definitely. Yeah. I uh, definitely agree with that. Okay. Uh, I am not the lone Jew at all. In fact, I was talking about Keats as being a tournament organizer. So. Yep. Uh, my, my first place is Injustice. <laughs> it's such a good game. Seriously. <laughs> it really is a fun, really interesting game. And the way that things have played out, it hasn't kept itself in the limelight as far as a lot of people are concerned mm -hmm. there are areas of the country where it's still very heavily played uh, but it doesn't really get that much respect outside of those uh, areas and as far as stream viewers go which really sucks and yeah. I, I, I understand that the first uh, few patches of the game the zoners were very uh, very good right it was kind of a slow game some characters were really really good uh, a character in particular was really, really good. <laughs> but that's not the case anymore. I have no idea what the tiers are in that game. They seem to fluctuate all the time. There are characters who are grapplers who might be top tier. Zoners might be top tier. Mid-range characters, maybe. Pressure types. I don't know. There's like all these different options. Uh, all those characters are really good. And, and if you have watched any of the top eights, like for example at NEC, I think you'd see a really interesting... Uh, game. I, I just I feel like the strategies are very interesting. They're varied. Yeah. The, the gameplay looks different on different characters. It's not what people think when they think of injustice, which is really unfortunate to me. Now, the way that the game looks and sounds, we've talked about this, <laughs> is not conducive. I know to people loving it because it doesn't look great and it doesn't sound great. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that matters for some people. But I just I really want everybody to try that game seriously and i think i think a lot of people will like it i really do so but that hasn't happened unfortunately it's it's been under the radar especially over the last uh well since evil probably yeah i mean it, it's kind of a weird trend to me that i feel like fighting games only have a very short period of time before people write them off and i think that's yeah. really unfortunate because there's a lot of fighting games that have taken a long time for it to really pick up steam Hopefully people change, but I don't know. There's a lot of games out there, so that's one of the things. So. Okay, uh, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, first up is going to be FGC Member of the Year and then Non-Stupid Drama Story of the Year. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 